Hello, everyone. This is the mind of Lilith, and thank you for joining me today as I take a deeper look into the most recent episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville, season six, episode eight. I will not be doing a full episode recap as there are plenty of other content creators who do a great job covering the show. Instead, I'm going to focus on specific segments of the episode that I believe can be used as teachable moments for myself and the audience. So, I finally recorded my Soul Ties Part 1 commentary, and I'm going to be publishing that tomorrow after I post my Part 2 commentary for Denia uh, Jackson's interview on the podcast. So, um, in this episode, I'm going to focus on Kimmy, Maurice, and uh, Maurice Jr., as well as Tiffany, Martel, and Marceau. I wanna focus on Martel, Marceau and Tiffany and Martel first. Last week I said that I did not like the way that Tiffany was asking Sheree questions. In last episode, um, Martel had invited Sheree to his magazine cover party event. And Tiffany pulled Sheree to the side and started to ask her some very intrusive personal questions about her relationship with Martel. And I said that the questions, in my opinion, were a bit heavy handed and clumsy, which to me meant that they weren't coming from a sincere or genuine place. I also said that uh, Tiffany was asking Sheree questions that wasn't her business and also questions that most people would feel uncomfortable answering. So uh, I feel like even if Tiffany asked the right questions, she didn't ask it in a way that would elicit an honest response. Or the questions were not worded in a way where Sheree would feel comfortable answering. Because number one, Tiffany does not know Sheree from a can of paint and it's none of her business. Number two, Tiffany and Martel, sorry, Sheree and Martel don't even have a serious relationship like that. So Tiffany's asking questions that you would ask someone who is in a long-term committed partnership with somebody, not someone who's casually dating someone and low-key using for sex or clout. Uh, Martel and Sheree's relationship, in my opinion, is not anything genuine or serious like that. So the nature of Tiffany's questions was inappropriate and to be honest, it was kind of dumb and counterproductive. It just made Sheree defensive. And if someone's defensive with you, then they're not gonna be honest with you. So if someone's not gonna be honest with you, why ask them any questions? And I said, one of the rules that I have is that I don't ask people questions that I know they will not give me an honest response to. I'll just <laughs> assume, <laughs> assume and keep it pushing, right? And so um, Tiffany, the problem I have with Tiffany and for these past couple of episodes is the fact that she is acting like a Karen. She is acting like somebody who would throw her rock and hide her hand and then play victim. So when I said Tiffany was being fake about it last week and I said that these questions were not coming from a genuine, honest face, I knew that she would not be able to stand on what she was saying. I knew that she would backtrack and she would try to make it seem like it was something that it was not. Tiffany was making it seem as if she was asking those questions to protect Melody and to look out for her because Melody's her friend, when in actuality she was being nosy and messy. So I'm going to be nosy, messy, and intrusive and and then make it seem as if I'm doing it to help another black woman out because Melody is my friend. Tiffany is not Melody's friend. Tiffany's not anybody's friend, okay? And again, she was very heavy handed and sloppy with the questioning, which made it counterproductive. There was no point in asking Sheree those questions because Sheree was too defensive to answer in a way that would be productive to the conversation. Marcel even asked Tiffany in this episode, he was like, so what are you getting out of it? How would Sheree's responses to Tiffany's questions affect Tiffany's life in any way? That is why it's also disrespectful because you are involved in someone else's business. You're low-key trying to sabotage somebody else's relationship, a friend's relationship, right? I think they're friends with Martel. I think she's friends with Martel and Marceau. You are trying to sabotage your friend's relationship and then don't want to take accountability for it. So it's like blowing up somebody else's house and then running for cover in your own house. So you try to blow up Martel's house, and then when he confronted you about it, you run to your husband as if, listen, I'ma say this. <laughs> Tiffany went to her husband Lou and told her that Martel and Marceau confronted her. This is like a preview for next episode. 
I don't like the way that scene felt because it reminded me of situations in the past in history where a white woman would lie on a black man or say he raped her, say he hit her, say he abused her, runs to her husband or her brother or father, tells the story to make herself look like a victim, doesn't give context to what happened and puts a battery in her husband or her father or her brother's back and then the husband and father brother confronts these black dudes and they get hurt because of what she said. That's Karen like behavior and Tiffany being raised by a white mother. Um, I'm not saying that all white women are, are like that, but she's acting like a Karen for real. I'm going to start some shit, get people hurt and then cry as if I'm the victim because I don't want to be held accountable for causing chaos, confusion and destruction. So I'm going to cry and act like I'm in pain when in actuality I've done harm to you so that you don't retaliate against me. So I'm protected. I can continue to burn homes down. I can continue to falsely accuse people of rape and murder and this and a third. And I can get away scot-free with my white tears. That's how Tiffany is acting. And in the next episode, when Lou and Martel and Marceau get into an altercation at a party or some sort of confrontation, all of a sudden now, Tiffany is dizzy and seeing stars and crying. And she's pulling her husband to her side. I was triggered by that. It was triggering because we've seen this before and I'm not saying that Tiffany is racist. I'm not saying that at all, but um, white women deal with issues or they're conditioned or groomed to deal with issues and conflict in a way that's more passive aggressive while black people are more aggressive and direct and in your face about certain things. And so the issue I have with Tiffany's line of questioning is the fact that she was being nosy about something that was none of her business and then when she's confronted by the person who she's affecting, she wants to play victim and as if she's been hurt. But in actuality, she's inflicted more harm on Martel and Sheree than Martel and Marceau did to her. So Martel and Marceau, they were being a little bit sarcastic. They were being a little bit patronizing and a little bit condescending and they had to because they had to kind of diffuse some of the tension. So they were trying to, you know, make jokes and make light of it because they didn't want to um, make Tiffany feel threatened or unsafe. So they were smiling and joking and they did not want her to feel as if they would physically harm her. And I respect them for that, right? But Tiffany turns around and acts as if they've done something to her. I didn't like that scene at all. That is very triggering for me. And I hate that word because it's so popular nowadays, but to see Tiffany put the battery in her husband's back without giving context to what actually happened. And it was actually her fault. And then for Lou to be like, oh, that's my wife. I got to defend her to two men who really didn't do it. I didn't like that at all. I, it, I don't, it felt nasty and gnarly. Tiffany needs to change or pivot from whatever storyline she's trying to create this season because it makes her look like a Karen and it's very off-putting. And like I said last week, uh, if Tiffany didn't want to be confronted with the consequences of her actions, she should not have engaged in her behavior. She should have asked the questions that would elicit this type of response from Martel or Sheree. Because like Marceau said, a lot of people would have punched her in her face, pregnant or not. That's none of your business. What are you trying to do? Yes, Martel's a blockheaded dildo. Yes, Martel is a cheater. And Martel even said, <laughs> now <Nah>, that's, <laughs> I felt like that was cap. Martel was like, am I a cheater? Or did I cheat? I cheated. I'm not a cheater. Martel, you're a cheater. You cheat for five years. You're a cheater. Er. Okay? Present tense and future tense. Not, I cheated. It's who I was in the past. No. You're a cheater. Um, I think that uh, Tiffany, is she a cheater? I think she cheated. She didn't have like a, con a consistent pattern of behavior of cheating. So I don't think she did it more than one time I guess I don't know how often she did it but she cheated on her ex-husband fine but Martel cheated for half of his marriage and he's still not committed to the person that he cheated with so he's a cheater in my opinion but again that was a great point he made Tiffany is going around telling his business and you know she got her own dirt her own tea and like I said the next episode you see her crying with her belly I was like this is awful I didn't feel bad I was like what it's the way she grabbed Lou like a kid, like, save me, because she knew she had started something. I don't know when this scene was, uh, when this, when it was shot. After the confrontation with Martel and Marceau outside of Maurice, or was it before? I don't know. 
but she grabbed him like oh save me just the way she grabbed him like I got myself into some mess that I can't get out of I need to pretend as if I'm sick and injured and the babies are suffering or whatever I hope I'm wrong but it was really looking like <laughs> no you wrote a check your ash couldn't cash and now your husband's out in the street fighting because of a lie you told and now you want to look like the victim that is so uh, icky karen -y. that's that's very karen -y. i'm sorry uh to start trouble and then instead of taking accountability for your role in the mess you'll cry and act as if you're being harmed by the destruction you've caused other people not because you care about the other people but because you don't want to be implicated in your destructive behavior so you don't want to be blamed for something you did so you'll act like someone else's suffering that you caused is actually causing harm to you so that you don't get your ass beat or so that you don't get in trouble that's very Karen like behavior I don't know who raised her like that but Maurice, no, sorry, Marcel was on the money with that comment. He was like, we got to see, get you tested for being a Karen. That is Karen-like behavior. Absolutely. Not only am I going to throw a rock and hide my hand, I'm going to blame you for that. I'm going to get you in trouble. I'm going to get you thrown in jail for something that I did. And then when it's revealed that I lied, I'm going to cry because I don't want to get my ass beat. I don't have any mercy. I don't have any compassion or empathy for the people I lied on. I'm crying to protect myself from dealing with the consequences of my own bad behavior. If Tiffany could not deal with Martel and Marceau's very polite questioning of her motivations and her intentions towards Sheree, then she shouldn't have asked Sheree those questions. Those questions were more offensive than Martel and Marceau interrogating her about those questions or asking her why she was in their business. So the reaction to Tiffany's questioning was actually more benign than Tiffany asking those questions in the first place. So in other words, like Tiffany was more disrespectful to Sheree, a stranger, than Martel and Marceau were to her. They treated her with, with more respect than she gave Sheree who is a woman, a fellow black woman, right? So Tiffany's always talking about, you know, fellow black woman, I'm supporting my fellow black woman. She did not do that in that regard. I don't know if she was acting as if she was a social media content creator on YouTube talking about the show. Like she was asking questions as if she were on a social media platform just discussing the show. And that was not her place. The content creators on YouTube and on Instagram and Facebook have a different relationship with the cast. So we are given a bit more permission or carte blanche or freedom to ask certain questions because we're they're not in our proximity they're not our friends they're not our associates we don't work with them and you know sometimes lines get crossed but when you are close to people or when you have a working relationship with them or you're friends with them or casual whatever um there's a certain level of tact that you need to have to maintain these relationships that you would not otherwise if i were tiffany and I was seriously interested in finding out what was going on with Martel and Melody. I would ask something like, based on Martel's history with Melody and Arion, do you think that this relationship has longevity? Is Martel your type of guy or what do you like about him? Something like that. Um, and based on her, her responses, you can pretty much deduce where the relationship is going and how she feels about him and so on without being, again, so heavy handed and tacky and intrusive. Because when you're intrusive, again, it makes someone feel defensive and like you're attacking them. And so they don't feel comfortable or safe with you. So why would they tell you anything? That's not your business, Tiffany. Okay. All right. Now on to Kimmy, Maurice, and Maurice Jr., a.k.a. Monster. Kimmy is still having a hard time enforcing rules in the household because Monster is not doing his chores. And they have a pretty nice sized house. I'm guessing two or three bedrooms. Um, you know, cleaning up his room, mowing the lawn, washing dishes, doing laundry. That's a lot for one person to do, especially one person who is suffering from cancer or cancer treatments. Kimmy is an older woman. She's in her 50s, I believe. She's already raised her child by herself, her son, Jalen, who we haven't seen this season, interestingly enough. And um, it seems as if she's maintaining the whole house by herself. If that is true, that's fucked up. And this is why a lot of women are now warning 
older women to not get married to these men in their 40s because a lot of these men are looking for a nurse, a purse, and a maid in their older age. Why would Maurice beg for his wife to send their son to him to live with him full time if he's not trying to be a full time or even a part time parent? For Kimmy to be doing what it seems like all the housework, the cooking multiple times a day, cleaning, doing laundry, mopping, cleaning up bathrooms, do you know, mowing the lawn. I don't know if she mows the lawn or not. That's usually a male's job. Taking out the garbage, whatever, whatever. For her to be maintaining a household and pretty much taking care of two grown men. Because at this point, at 15 years old, Maurice Jr. is very strong. He's probably stronger than Kimmy at this point. And his testosterone's pumping. He's, you know, he's going through hormonal changes. He's going through mental changes. You know, boys become rebellious at a certain age. And Maurice, as the father figure, as his biological father, is supposed to be modeling the behavior that he wants to see his son engage in. He's supposed to be the example. But if Maurice Sr. is not washing dishes and he's not cleaning and he's not cooking and he's not doing chores, why would his son want to do that? Children, especially boys, they do as you do, not as you say. So if they see you taking advantage of Kimmy, your, the, your wife, they're going to take advantage too. So Maurice had a whole freaking list of whatever tasks that he wanted um, his son to do. Some boot camp crap. And chores was not on that list of 20. That is so disrespectful to me. That is very disrespectful. For your wife to be going through chemotherapy, her mental health is being affected. Her physical health is being affected. She's not as strong as she used to be or whatever. Um, for her to have to worry about taking care of your child that you begged to live with you is absurd to me. Did Maurice ask for Munster because he didn't want to pay child support after he finished law school? Because this whole, I'm going to be a role model and be a father figure, you know, a son needs to be with his father. That's cool and everything. And that's not a bad idea. I get what he, what he was trying to do, but he's not doing what he said he was going to do. He's pretty much leaning on Kimmy to be the father and the mother in the situation. It's not fair because she's older. She already raised her child by herself and she's going through an illness. So I see her cooking. I'm not saying that Kimmy should be treated with kid gloves because you know sometimes people need to do things to feel productive. Some people need to stay active to keep their mind off of negative situations and I get that. So she may want to cook and clean but if she's asking for something the bare minimum is for a uh, monster or Maurice Jr. to clean up his own room and at 15 years old she can't enforce consequences the way that a male figure would. Kimmy already did her job with her son Jalen. I'm sure she didn't have to worry about Jalen cleaning up his room and doing his chores. She was on top of him from a very young age, I'm sure, by giving him discipline and order and structure. So when he turned 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, he was pretty much ready to go into the world and become a productive citizen. I'm not saying that Maurice Jr. is not ready for that, but Maurice Jr. has gone through a lot of changes. He may feel depressed because he's missing his mother. He may feel a bit, you know, uh, unstable because he moved from Pontiac, Michigan to Huntsville, Alabama, totally different environment. So both Kimmy and Maurice should consider whether or not, you know, a monster is going through some sort of you know, depression, slight depression, you know, feeling lost or just, you don't know, feeling like he misses his mother or homesick. Those things would have an effect on the way a child carries himself. And Kimmy seems to be the type of person that wants things done on time in a particular way and teenagers who are not used to discipline and structure usually re uh, rebel against that type of system well to be honest even teenagers who are used to like very strict rules and discipline at some point they begin to rebel against the system it's just a natural thing that they have to get used to I'm not sure if Kimmy dealt with that with Jalen but I don't think it's fair for Maurice to put the brunt of the child rearing on the stepmother who's going through cancer treatments and Kimmy felt disrespected but I feel like Kimmy's in a bind now because she's going through a, a very emotionally troubling situation and she will she needs emotional support so she's not going to rock the boat um, the way that somebody who was in their 20s or 30s would right she has more patience and more tolerance for her husband Maurice in my opinion because of her age and because of her health situation so she'll put up with a whole lot more than she would if she were 20 years younger and again that's not fair to her I hope that she gets some help whether it's a maid service or something but I think she wants to teach monster responsibilities or Maurice Jr. responsibilities Maurice Jr. is not going to be able to pay for maid service 
right out of high school. He has to learn how to clean up his room, to wash dishes, to cook, to do laundry, to mow the lawn, to clean up the house. He has to learn how to manage and maintain a household. Otherwise, he'll end up like his father and his uncle relying on a woman to do all the housework for them and putting the brunt of that, plus paying all the bills or paying half the bills on the wife. That's not fair. Kimmy is bringing more to the table than Maurice is, in my opinion. And I think that's why he married her. Not to say Kimmy isn't a beautiful woman. She's very intelligent. She's beautiful. She's hardworking. She's level-headed. She's intelligent. She's all these things. So she's a good catch to any man. But that doesn't mean that just because you're a good catch that you, you should be taken advantage of. And she even mentioned in the confessional that um, out of the 20 things on the list, not one was something that she wanted, which means that she was being taken for granted. Maurice does not make Kimmy's needs a priority unless it revolves around sex. In the next episode, I think Kimmy talks about her sex drive dwindling because of chemo. I don't like that conversation. If that's what I heard properly because her voice went down. I'm hoping that Kimmy is not concerned about Maurice not getting enough sex while she's going through chemo and picking up after his son. I hope that's not what I'm hearing. That she's concerned about his sexual needs not being met while she's going through chemotherapy radiation picking up after her son working and taking care of the whole household i think she may be on, on medical leave now but she's still doing a lot of work around the house and still trying to raise his son and still worrying about his needs and what he wants i hope that's not the case all right guys i'm gonna leave it there i look forward to reading your feedback please like share and subscribe and i will speak to you soon